Toronto. I've never really been to Canada. I really don't know much about it. I know Drake's always showing love for the T-Dot. Vince Carter put Toronto on the map. That was like 15 years ago. Fast forward to today, and they're building something special. Basketball in Canada is making serious moves. They're taking away prep school spots, college scholarships, and jobs from the big bad U.S. Anthony Bennett and Andrew Wiggins were number one in the NBA draft, so they gotta be doing something right. Like but when did this basketball revolution start? And why are so many good players coming out of this area? I came all the way from California to find the heart of this city. You know the drill. At this time, we usually meet up some OGs and get the lay of the land. But this time, we start to trip off with a bang. Right off the plane, we headed straight to the Bio Steel All Canadian event, Canada's version of the McDonald's All American game. And today, the three point and dunk contest is going on, showcasing the future and inspiring the next generation of Canada's troops. One of those constant things in life, and there's always a trail that leads back to why things change. In Canada, who? There's three main reasons: the Raptors coming to Toronto, Steve Nash, and Canadians going to prep school in the states. I talked to some of the early guys in the basketball scene: Mike George, who started CIA Bounce, and now is a basketball agent, and Huggy who's one of Nash's closest friends and now manages Ezra Wiggins. They've seen the rise in Canada basketball firsthand. It's never that we couldn't physically handle and hang with the U.S., it was just more mentally. I think you're going from where, you know, Jamal McGlure is pretty much the only Canadian in the league, now you've got several different guys making the league, and so I think when guys went off to the prep schools, they mentally able to handle it more, and then when they went off to college, and you can see in progression the success through high school, AAU, college and now obviously the NBA. A lot of people would be saying, why are these guys taking our kids and going to America? Because there was you know, an infrastructure that existed and you know, sometimes people like to resist change. So we were kind of went against the grain and we're you know, jumping into the AU scene in America. And then the next step was to send our kids over there for prep school and really started to change. You know, and that's, when you're playing against a high level of competition all year round, you know, and practices, and playing against the best kids in America, you know, the results were astounding. Kind of gives you that like Seattle feel where everybody kind of like uh, knows each other, kind of like a family. Why are all these players coming out of this area? It's the competition and the belief that they have that they can go over somewhere else, like in the United States where basketball is huge and compete against these guys. I want to see where, what the game is going to be like tomorrow. There's supposed to be some real good hoopers and dunk contest, three-point contest, that's cool. But, you know, when the hoop come out, that's when you start seeing what players are really made of. Toronto is growing, and I'm not just talking about hoops. There's new buildings going up everywhere you turn. New folks immigrating into one of the most diverse cities in the world. Adding new athletes to the mix and building a new hoop scene. But even as a new wave is coming in, lots of Canada's top talent is leaving for US prep schools and colleges to play better competition. And now high schools like Eastern Commerce are shutting down.
talent is leaving the city because of basketball and because new money is driving families out the city. I met up with Kareem Griffin, a coach at Easter, Olo Madi, a former player, and also Drew Ebanks, who runs the Canadian site On Point Basketball, to get the lowdown on Toronto's past and future. This program is ridiculous back in the day. Like, you couldn't really think to beat them at, at, at a stretch. It was like they were getting players to come in and they were churning out D1 players. So from the outside looking in, it was something I think that a lot of people in Toronto, a lot of coaches, a lot of players tried to emulate. This school, you know, it saved my life, you know, because um, I was a drug dealer, to be honest. And, you know, it gave me, up, you know, something else to do. And it just became routine. And, you know, I graduated school, went to college, you know, graduated with, uh, you know, I got my accounting diploma. I didn't, I, I, I owe this school everything. The perception in getting a scholarship now is to go to the United States. I don't think that you have to go to the United States necessarily. You know, like our kids are not just athletic, they're talented fundamentally as well. Because for us, because we don't have the, the tradition or the legacy like the U.S. does, we have to teach fundamentals. We can't just get by on athleticism. We have to teach it. You know, and, and these kids learn it from a young age. Jamal Murray, fantastic player. He had to learn somewhere. He didn't learn in the States. He had to learn here. Justin Jackson, same thing. Uh, Mike, same thing. Junior Fugger, same thing. Like, all these guys, you know, I, I, I just don't think that, I don't think that we give ourselves enough credit. You know, I think that Karen doesn't give himself enough credit. Right so, you know, it, it, it's here. It's ripe for the picking right now. That's what just, I was telling you. You're you're right. Right. Just People are coming over here and they're riding the bench. Because they thought, like, normally you go overseas or, like, you go to another country. You go there or you leave from America. You go there to get some playing time, right? You think, you wouldn't think that being from America. We don't know. Yeah. We're not able to see it. Why? I mean, there's not. You, you guys really can't even watch it on television here. So how are we going to watch it there? I want to see a time when Canada's top players aren't leaving and growing this hoop movement together. There's still lots that has to continue to grow, but I think they're on the right path. That's why I think the bio still all Canadian game was big. All the sponsors, all the TV crews are finally out, showcasing how far Canada basketball has come. Guys like Don Maker, Jamal Murray, and Jalen Poyser are big names that most Americans have heard about, and they're all from Canada, showing out. for the bio skill all Canadian game and uh it was good competition man I like the hoop out here it's, it's a few players man I, I like I would love to come out here and run a run a workout one day that's my goal come back out to Toronto seem like this is where all the hoop is at but uh got two more days here man I'm enjoying it I'm really enjoying uh Canada Canada's definitely got the athletes and the passion but I wanted to know how they were developing their talent People kept telling us about Vlad. I've never heard of him. Just knew that he had a thick Eastern European accent. The whole camera crew was joking around that he could be some Russian hitman straight from the movies. So I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. But come to find out, Vlad was one of the best trainers that I've ever come across. Finish, strong, push it. 
If you know how to shoot you at grade five, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's not even that. I mean, you're gonna work with a kid at grade five on shooting, that doesn't make sense. So many guys calling me like, like grade three, grade four, grade five. I'm like, let the kid enjoy the game. They're gonna have, they're gonna play till 30 some years, right? So let, let, let them enjoy the game, let them get in love with the game first, and then I'll. You know, there's place for me and guys like me afterwards, right? That's why I always say this advice to everybody that call me when they're like grade five or they're, they're like six years old. Can you train them? No. no. They know already. Yeah. When they come to me, they got to be hungry. Otherwise, I don't tolerate any other stuff. They're not going to try to improve. That's the whole point, uh, you know? I mean, if LeBron, Kobe, Jordan improved in their, in their career, why not you? Yeah. I, I started going crazy about basketball when my coach said, look, either come to practices or get the hell out. And he did kick me out. And after that, not one day I ever missed a practice until this day. Even as a trainer, even as a, as a coach, and even as a player. You know, but that was a trigger point. So if I trigger somebody, even on a negative way, right, to, to move them forward, I've done my job. I was excited to see our city on the rise is building because I'm building something of my own and Toronto didn't disappoint. There's a lot of factors that go into something growing and there's no denying that people really want the basketball movement to happen. They're doing things the right way, not trying to speed up the process and letting things grow how they should organically. I'm excited to see where things will go. And I'm just happy I got to see things in the early stages. So this is my final stop in part of the city. I truly appreciate everyone I've met along the way. Because everyone has given me something to take back. This doesn't mean that the learning has stopped. It's just time to get back in the lab and let the real work begin.